This country is a secular country, yes or no? No, it's got an established church. You don't even know the constitution of this country. Well, who's the head of state? What? Does she have any, does who's she have the head of state? Does she have is this country you don't even know the constitution of this country. Why is it not Christophobic? Why is it not Christophobic if you do similar discriminatory laws against Christians in the name of Allah? So when you look at Islamic history, right? And I just want to, I will. No, no, actually, if you look one at second, Islamic oh, look, history, if we're going to do a shouting match, history. I'll just start shouting again. Okay. Do you want to ask a question and have a conversation? Okay, okay. Right, so I just want to finish the point I was making before these guys run off. They go, he's come to me and he said, how dare you interrupt Muslims? For how many times have we seen Muslims like Paul and Mansour and Hashim interrupt Christians? Happened twice to this brother today. Twice. Muslims go around looking for Christians to debate all the time. You've been on camera, bro. Right? So, Muslims come around the corner looking for Christians all the time. When Muslims do it to Christians, Muslims think it's okay. When Christians do it to Muslims, suddenly it's a problem. He'll complain because we're about to go and interrupt him. We're about to go and interrupt him. Yeah? But the thing is, Christians, you've got to stand up to these Islamists. You've got to find your courage. So now, so now let us talk about what this brother asked a question on. Are Christians second class just because they pay the jizya? Right, so let's just look at how Christians are trapped in an Islamic caliphate. I'm going to answer your question. Firstly, they have to pay a jizya tax. If they don't pay that tax, their property, their lives are forfeit. Forfeit. Wait, I haven't finished. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Remember it and come back to it. No. Let, let me finish and then come back to it. But let's look at what else happens in Islamic caliphates. Christians cannot convert to Islam. If they do, they can be killed. Christians cannot marry Muslim women. But a Muslim man can marry a Christian woman. Muslims can own Christian slaves. But Christians can't own Muslim slaves. Christians cannot do their processions in the street. They can't sound their bells. They can't evangelize their faith. They can't have outward displays of their faith that would offend Muslims. Christian churches cannot be repaired. These are how Muslims treat Christians in every single Islamic empire from the time of Muhammad to the time of ISIS and every Islamic civilization in between. Why, as Christians, should we accept this kind of dimitude? Now, let me ask you a question. You can come back. You can, of course. But I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question and you can speak. Let me speak and then you can... Yes, here's my question. If Christians treat Muslims by saying to them that we're going to confiscate your mosques, that if you go and do dawah, we'll kill you, if people convert to Islam, we'll kill them. Would you call it Islamophobia? Yeah, go on. Okay, so your point was that uh, the fact that Christians are paying jizya shows that they are second class. They don't say that their property is taken. So, can I please do an analogy on that point? So, imagine like a rich guy doesn't pay taxes, which is like, as you can see today, and a poor man pays taxes. Does the fact that he pays taxes make him a second class citizen? Okay, so the brother didn't listen to anything that I said. No, I, I heard what he said. So now answer my question. Okay. Uh, Do you remember what my question was? Yeah, so... Uh, what was my question? If a Christian does the same thing that Muslim does... So if we, confiscate, yeah. if we confiscate the park, the mosque in Regent's Park, and say that a Muslim, someone who becomes a Muslim should be killed, and we say that we can own you as slaves, but you can't own us as slaves, or we say that you have to wear distinctive clothes. Hold on one second. And we say we have, you have to wear distinctive clothes so you can be identified. Would you call that Islamophobia? That's not answering my question. Yeah, so it was an if. It was an if. 
Answer the question. You're talking about this country. Would it be, would it be Islamophobia? 100%. 100%. So if we did it to the Muslims, it's Islamophobia. Would it be wrong? If it does it, if it does the thing, if it does the thing that you're talking about, of course it's Islamophobia. It's in the name of secularism. Exactly. It's in the name of secularism. So why isn't it Christophobia when Muslims do it to Christians? It doesn't even make sense. That's the Islamic mindset. If you do it to them, it's Islamophobia. If they do it to you, well, you complaining about it doesn't make sense. Okay, so, okay, so let's get the point. You're saying that in Islamic countries, uh, Christians, we can take Jews as well. Can we talk about Jews as well? Yes or no? Christians and Jews. Christian and Jews. Go on, what's your point? Okay, so let's say that uh, uh, Europe in 1938 to 1945 was an Islamic country with 6 million Jews. Would they be killed? Yes or no? Okay, so let's Six answer that question. Jews be born, yes or no? Let's answer that question. So it is a spurious argument made by Muslims that that what happened in Nazi Germany had something to do with Christianity. Had something to do with Christianity. It was to do with modernity. Nazism is rooted in two principal philosophies. Ethno-nationalism and Nietzschean philosophy. Those are the roots of Nazism those were the roots of the Holocaust. It was not rooted in Christianity. He said, would it have happened if it was an Islamic state? Well, we have an example. It is called Iberian Peninsula. Because what happened in the Iberian Peninsula? 5,000 Jews were killed in a single anti-Jewish pogrom. Why? Why? Because one caliph of the Iberian Peninsula was enlightened enough to place the Jews in authority over the Muslims. And that so offended the Muslims, they didn't just kill those two Jews, they went and killed 4,999 other Jews at the same time. He said, he said, could this have happened in the Islamic world? There is a reason why there are no Jews, no Big Jewish communities in the Islamic world today. What about the Armenian genocide? What about the Assyrian genocide? Islamic genocides of Christians that inspired Hitler. Hitler said, when asked about the Holocaust, he said, who remembers the Armenian Holocaust? And who carried out the Armenian Holocaust? Muslims. Was the Armenian Holocaust a religious? Yes. 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 Not at all. Yes. Because they wanted independence. Am I wrong or not? What about the Greeks? No, no, he dropped now. You ask me his question, he dropped. What about the Assyrians? YouTube, this is Bob. And why did the Kurds join in? Why did the Kurds join in? Yes. In the time of the Ottoman Empire, people wanted their own independence. The Ottoman Empire didn't want that. So That's why the genocide happened. Ah, are you an apologist? Are you an apologist for that genocide? Do you do you agree with it? Do you agree with that genocide? Why would I agree with? I'm asking you. What? That genocide. I, I want to know whether you do or you don't. Of course not. Why would I agree okay, with that genocide? Okay, fair enough. You don't. You fair enough. That Islam, like, uh, uh, in, uh, Brother, in the Christian faith, we are taught we are taught that he is made in the image of God and that I'm made in the image of God. That means that regardless of his ethnicity or his religion, he has an innate dignity. In Islam, I am not afforded the same rights because they don't even have that concept. You completely ignored that. You went to another point, and then you went to another. No, point. you didn't and listen. Then you went bro. to another. Point. You didn't no, listen. No, you talked about the jizya. You were like, imagine in Britain. The verse in the jizya. The verse about the jizya. What else does it say? It says. It says. You don't think your property gets taken. You talked about that. Yeah. It's the same thing in Britain. In Britain, you get you get ejected or not. So so hold on, hold on. So hold on. The same verse that talks about the jizya, bro. Talks about one second. The same verse. That says until they pay the jizya, until they pay the jizya, 
and feel themselves humiliated. That's the injunction of the Quran. That's the what the Quran. Yeah, Muslims interpret that normative. Yes, they prove to me where it says that it's a normative. So, so hold on one second. I'm going to. I'm going to look through how. Are you listening? Are you listening? I've not even. I've not even spoken. Would you like to debate? Yeah, come in. Come in, bro. Come in, bro. One second. One second. One second. One second. One second. So one second. Right, guys. I can do talking over one another. You've just seen me do it for an hour. Yeah, I can do this all day. I can do this all day. I can do it all day. It doesn't matter how many times. It doesn't matter how many times you interrupt me. It won't stop me from saying what I've got to say. So, with revert, with regards to the verse. Yeah, we can pull up the Quran if we want. Here's what it says. It says. It says that wage war against them, fight them, the unbeliever, fight them until they pay the jizya. Yes, it talks about the Ali Mal Kitab. It talks about the Ali Mal Kitab. Right. Right. So, so I have not. Uh, it's 9:39, I think. Yeah. One second, bro. Let me, I'm going to finish my point. It doesn't matter how many times you interrupt me. I am going to still say my point. I'm still going to say my point, bro. I'm still going to say my point. So, as I was saying, as I was saying, so the the Quranic verse doesn't just say pay the jizya. It says until they pay the jizya and willing submission and feel themselves subdued. Now, how have Muslims interpreted feel themselves subdued? Through 1400 years of Islamic history, countless Muslim empires independently have all treat Christians as second class citizens, which this brother admits that if we took those laws and did them to Muslims, it would be Islamophobia. But when I pointed out to him, then why isn't it Christophobia when they do it to us? He says that doesn't even make sense. Now, let let them let them let them let them let them. So here's what it says. Here's what it says. Fight those people of the book. Who's the people of the book? Talking about the time. Who's the people of the book? Book the treaty. Who's the people of the book? Wait, which treaty? They had a treaty. The Jews and Muslims. So not Christians then. No, it's people of the book. People of the book. So not Christians. Here is not even talking about the Christians. Right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What it says. Hold on. What it says. Fight those people of the book who do not believe in yep. Allah, yep. nor in the last day, and do not take as unlawful what Allah and His Messenger has declared as unlawful, and do not profess the faith of truth until they pay jizya with their own hands while they are subdued. This Whilst they are subdued. Yeah. So, let me ask you this question. Do you know anything about Islamic history? Okay, right. Which empires do you know about? What? This question doesn't make sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes, it's it's it makes sense. So I'll tell you why it makes sense. So you're going to test me on my knowledge of like the... No, no, no. If you don't know, you don't know, that's fine. I'm not going to I'm not gonna exact anything from you if you don't know. I'm just asking you if you know. Do you know? I know some... Okay, right. Do you know, for instance, that in the caliphate inside Egypt, they used to make Christians wear yellow belts just so they could be identified as Christians? The Christians had to ride on donkeys because they weren't allowed to ride on horses. Now, if we passed a law that said Muslims could ride on only ride on bikes, but they couldn't drive cars, you'd call that discriminatory, wouldn't you? Okay, so you said that if we did it, are you talking about Britain or if there was a Christian country? Yeah. Okay, if there was a Christian country, first of all, if there was a Christian country, Muslims wouldn't go live in it. No. So first of all, yeah, that's that's, that's not true. Bob, let him speak. This country is a secular country, yes or no? No, it's got an established church. You don't even know the constitution of this country. Well, who's the head of state? What? Does she have any, does who's she have the head of state? Does she have is this you don't even know the constitution power. of this country. Who is, Who is the head of state? Who is the head of state? Who is the head of state? Answer the question. Who is the, so he knows. Who's the head of the Church of England? Who's the head of the Church of England? Answer my question. Who is the, who is the head of state? 
can't see past Moss. She can't. No, she she signs. There you go. There you go. And she has to sign. He's been the, he's been no, the, she's the, not the head of the team. No, she is. She is in that. She is. No, you're confusing two things. You're confusing two things. She does not. She does not. She is constitutionally the head of state. She has no legislative power. Does this country legally have an established church? Answer the question. He said it was a secular country. He said that. Answer the question. You see, he doesn't know. Do you know? So this country, this country, this country. You know, I would love one day to find some Muslims that could have a conversation. I know you are, but your fanboys here are. Yeah. So, so. What? Just like a two and your other friend shouting in the back. Double stand. Yeah, yeah. So you can't complain, can you? Double stand. Complain. Right. Yeah. So here's the thing. Right. So you One second. You say if a country in, does the same like thing, like France at the moment is is that is that Islamophobic? What they're doing in France? Hundred percent because there you go. There you go. There you go. There's the hypocrisy. The French Republic is Islamophobic because it's passing laws against Muslims, but he's defending laws against Christians. We can debate later, bro, if you want. They're doing it in the name of freedom of speech. Am I wrong or not? And you're doing it in the name of Allah. Does France do whatever it does in the name of Christianity? No, it does it in the name of the Republic. Then be quiet. It's so what, what, why does that stop them? Why is it? Why? Why does that mean that it's Islamophobic? Because it's Islamophobic. Because they are doing it in the name of freedom of opinion and freedom of religion. No, they're not. They're doing oh, it. Sure. They're doing it on the so, three principles of the republic. The three principles of the republic. Yes. The three. The three principles of the republic are liberty, egalité. Right. Okay. Right. So that completely contradicts what it does. So. If One second. Uh, so why is it? Why is it not? Why is it? Why is it? Answer me this. Why is it not Christophobic? Why is it not Christophobic? If you do similar discriminatory laws against Christians in the name of Allah, why is it not? I've shown you. What, sorry? What would I do to you? I'd give you more rights than Sharia law would give to me. One second. No, 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 no. No, me and him are talking. Answer my question. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Do you deny the fact that Muslims pay more in zakat in terms of how much they pay than Christians pay in Zizia? Yes, I deny it. And shall I tell you why I deny it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall I tell you why I deny it? Christians pay more in Zizia than Muslims pay in zakat. Because zakat is given as a particular amount. But the, the jizya is decided by the caliph. He decides the limits of the, the jizya. It can change. It can change. Oh, so, but they're, so they're not guaranteed to be the same. It's not guaranteed to be the same. And what about blood money? I'm listening. Jizya is the same thing as a tax of today. Imagine. False equivalence. That's a false equivalent. You've been lied to, bro. Islamic history is testifying against you. Islamic history. And let me let me explain why. Islamic history is testifying against you because at different caliphates gave the jizya tax at different levels. Right? Which means, which means if, one second. But you have just tried to say that it's always equivalent to the zakat. That's what you said. You said it was at the same level. You said, you said the zakat is more. Do you deny the fact that Muslims pay more in zakat in terms of how much they pay than Christians pay in Zizia? Yes, I deny it. That's what you said. And he's just agreed. But that's not true. And what about blood money? What about blood money? Do you know about blood money? Do you know about blood money? Right, here's, here's, here's about blood money. If in an Islamic caliphate, if someone, if someone, if someone killed the two of us, right? In, 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 in an Islamic caliphate, if someone killed the two of us, the money that would be paid for your life in blood money would be double that paid for mine. Do you know that? 
Yes. Not on me right this second, oh, yeah, but uh, yes. So I'll, bring week. Week. I'll bring you next week. I'll bring you next week. I'll bring you. Uh, great, I'll bring you here. I'll bring you here. We'll have this debate and I'll, and then we'll do a flashback and we'll show how silly you are. So your claim here has no evidence, so you can't use it. No, it will have evidence. It will have evidence. It will have evidence. Now, you can't make the claim because there's no evidence. You can't No, no, it's a true claim. It's a true claim. In fact, we might even be able to show where I give the evidence in another debate. So when it comes up, you know what it might not be true. Go and here's here, here's where I give the evidence so that you're prepared for next week. I had a debate. Right now it's a false claim because there's no evidence. No, no. Until you bring one, it's a false claim. Yeah, I'm going to give you where you can find the evidence. It's in a debate that I had called Islam and Unjust Legal Code. And I lay out the evidence, quoting Islamic sources, showing the truth of what I am saying. Well, if you so quoted now, it, then show it now. Because I haven't got it on me now. Can you leave the link in the description? I haven't got it on me. Can you leave the link in the comments? Yeah. So, leave the link in the description. So, so here's the point. Firstly, firstly, you Muslims are ignorant about what your religion would do to me. You are ignorant about what your religion would do to me. You've got a double standard religion and you're not Or you're lying about what your religion would do to me. Can we make the point that there is no Islamic soul? Now we can all agree that Jizya, if, you, if there was an Islamic Listen, country, when did the Islamic uh, caliphate, come about? hypothetically, I'll you would debate you in a Jizya second. If you lived in it, what's that? Hypothetically, if there was an Islamic caliphate today, you would have to pay Jizya. And if if there was an Islamic caliphate today, I'd be executed for murder because I'm committed to killing the taxman. <laughs> I will, I will kill the man that comes to collect my jizya. I will kill him. Death before Dimitri. Yeah, if the jizya tax. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 shall I tell you why it's a false equivalence? It's a false equivalence. Oh wait, is Ali is Ali Dawa interrupting someone's conversation? Can you just give us the definition of tax? So, government that you have to pay for the purposes of the municipal uses of the state. The jizya tax is not that. The jizya tax, the jizya, the jizya tax, the jizya tax is paid for your life. It is a ransom for your life. Now he's walked away, so I'll finish my point. I'll finish my point. The fact of the matter is that the jizya tax is connected to the idea of humiliating Christians, making themselves feel subdued. I don't know whose phone this is. Okay. It's about making them feel subdued. And how would Muslims make us feel subdued? By making us second class citizens. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to be clear. Not every Muslim is as bad as their prophet. There's a lot of Muslims who are better than their prophet. But they are better than their prophet because they ignore their prophet. Not because they follow what their prophet said. And they say that I'm misrepresenting what the idea of subjugation means. Well, Islamic history shows us what that means. Go and speak to the Coptic Christians if you don't believe me. Go and speak to the Romanian Christians if you don't believe me. Go and speak to the Armenian Christians if you don't believe me. And ask those people what it means to be subdued under an Islamic state. Because those people will tell you, all you liberal do-gooders, all you Muslims who don't know anything about what your religion means, they will show you what it means to be subdued. Because they've got the history to tell you something that in the West we've forgotten because of the Enlightenment, because we've been cut off from our history and what it meant for Sicily to be occupied by Muslims. So wake up. Do not be intimidated or be browbeat.